You're watching the Samsung Galaxy S22 disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Next, we need to heat up the back plate using a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the glass back plate. And it is made of glass. On the back side, underneath the flash diffuser, there's a small spot or hole over here with a rubber gasket, and that's going to be for the secondary microphone. So basically, it'll pick up sound from outside around the ring of the flash. Also, the metal frame or camera bezel is removable from the glass portion. It's just held on with some adhesive. So if you wanted to just replace the metal frame, you'd have to heat it up and pry it off from the glass portion. There are 19 Phillips screws that need to be removed. Now the flex cable for the wireless charging coil has to be disconnected. Next we need to peel off the graphite film from the bottom speaker assembly. The wireless charging coil is located in the center and the NFC antenna is located on top. There's also a layer of graphite film which helps transfer heat. Once we have access to the battery cable, we're going to disconnect it first. Once the battery cable is disconnected, we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. We can also remove the top plastic cover. There are some antenna lines drawn on this plastic cover, which are these light gray color lines. And here's a look at the other side. Now we can disconnect the front facing camera. And the front facing camera is glued in place, so if you pry it off, you're most likely going to damage it. Now we can lift up and remove the main board. Taking a closer look at the main board, there's a 12 megapixel ultra wide lens, a 50 megapixel wide angle lens, and a 10 megapixel telephoto lens. The wide angle and telephoto camera both have OIS or optical image stabilization. There's another microphone located on the top corner, and the LED flash and light sensor are located below that microphone. This is also a multi layer board, so there's multiple layers to it. The camera connectors are located on the back and they can be disconnected by just popping them off. The proximity sensor is located here, and there's a graphite pad on the back shield. Once the graphite pad or graphite film is peeled back, there's thermal paste on top of the RAM and processor. Here's a better look with the thermal paste removed. There's a single Phillips screw holding down the top speaker assembly that needs to be removed. Now the top speaker assembly can be removed. The top speaker assembly has those little white foam balls underneath this blue tape. And here's a better look at the rest of it. Now the bottom speaker assembly can be lifted up and removed. Here's a better look at the bottom speaker assembly. And the bottom one also has those little white foam balls. So once the speaker assembly is removed, we can see this flex cable which connects to the screen underneath. So if you needed to replace your screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, and then you'd have to remove the screws on the bottom speaker assembly and remove the bottom speaker assembly, which would then give you access to disconnecting the cable for the screen. At that point, you'd heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath. Then you'd pry your old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply your new screen, and reassemble the phone. Technically, you should also be able to replace the screen by just prying it off from the front, but it might just be harder when you're trying to reconnect the flex cable when you're trying to put the new screen back on. We can go ahead and disconnect the flex cable from the screen. And then we need to disconnect these two flex cables which connect the main board to the subboard. There are three Phillips screws which are holding the subboard down that need to be removed. Now the subboard can be lifted up and removed. The primary microphone is located in the center, and the SIM reader is located on the back. There's also a rubber gasket around the charger port. 
Now that the subboard has been removed, we can see a liquid damage indicator, which is the white sticker on the bottom, and the color remains white, indicating no liquid got inside the phone and there's no liquid damage. So during the durability test, when we drop this phone in water, none of the water got inside. To remove the battery, there are no pull tabs provided to help us pry it off, so we're gonna have to use some isopropyl alcohol and apply some around the edges of the battery and let it sit there for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. Here's a better look at the 3700 milliamp hour battery. Once the battery is removed, we can see a 3D layer of graphite, which is underneath the battery and runs underneath the motherboard. And that helps transfer heat. Once the bottom film is peeled off, we can see the in-display fingerprint sensor. This model Galaxy S22 is a US-based model and it's for Verizon, so it has a two millimeter wave 5G antennas. So some variants of the Galaxy S22 might not come with these antennas, and that doesn't mean it doesn't have 5G. It just doesn't have the 5G millimeter wave antennas for the ultra wideband network 5G. Here's a better look at the antenna. The top one's held on with adhesive and the bottom one's held on with two Phillips screws. So if you need to replace the bottom one, you just take off those two Phillips screws and lift up and remove the antenna. And the top one's just held on with adhesive, so you just heat it up and pry it off. If you need to replace your power button or volume keys or the flex cable for it, there's a plastic bracket inside the frame. You just have to lift it up and pull it out of the frame and that'll pull out basically the flex cable with the keys or the clickers and then you'd be able to remove the physical keys as well. And there's a rubber gasket on the bottom speaker opening on the frame as well as the one on the top. And there's one over the microphone opening on the top and bottom. So if you ever accidentally put the stim eject tool in the wrong hole, you don't have to worry about it because the microphone and filter are both seated above the hole. So it's basically like an L shape and there'll be no damage caused. For the repairability score, I give this phone a 7.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply your backplate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.